The Coalition for Marriage is a real broad-based coalition of many groups of people who've come together for one purpose only, and that is to defend marriage as between one man and one woman, a lifelong union, and to have children within that particular construct. Um, so the campaign for marriage, the Coalition for Marriage, is uh, being launched today, and it's to give people across the country an opportunity to give their view on marriage, and in particular, people who feel concerned about redefining marriage. But first, I'd like to announce the launch of the Coalition for Marriage. The Coalition has one very simple aim, to support the current definition of marriage and to oppose all attempts to redefine it. The law currently defines marriage as the voluntary union for life of one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others. A saying known to all of us is that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. If that is the case, those of us who believe in the importance of marriage should be delighted that the Prime Minister, no less, wants those in civil partnerships to be married uh, is in itself an accolade. But we are not flattered. The reverse is true. We are worried and disappointed. Worried because an institution that has stood the test of time and is the building block of society is under threat and disappointed that the government has taken upon itself to redefine the nature of marriage. Marriage was not dreamt up by government and yet this government cannot simply overturn thousands of years of history by redefining it especially so when no political party made it part of the election manifesto. If they believed that the public support them on this issue, why didn't the party leaders have the courage of their convictions to put it in their manifestos? They have no mandate for this monumental change to our culture. In March, the government will have a consultation. But the Home Secretary has already said it's a consultation about how and not whether marriage is redefined. The 24 million married people in this country are not even going to be asked whether they mind marriage being redefined over their heads. This is profoundly anti-democratic. The government is running away from this public debate. They are bulldozing ahead without any thought for the consequences. And who is pushing for this momentous change? When candidates were canvassing for votes, did the average voter stop them in the street and beg them to redefine marriage? Of course not. Ordinary people want the government to sort out the economy. They want to feel safe on the streets. They want a decent education for their kids and they want a national health service we can all be proud of. They are not saying what I really want from the government is a new definition of marriage. The only people pushing for this are a handful of single interest groups and fans of political correctness. In short, Marriage is a loving and committed union of man and wife in a relationship that's intended to be faithful and lifelong. For thousands of years, marriage between a man and a woman has been fundamental to many different societies. Marriage has been so much a part of our everyday lives that we have failed to notice just how much marriage has shaped our nation. The view that it's uh a concern that's shared um, across denominations, but it's also important to recognise it's shared across faiths and those of no faith as well. Uh, I was just my, visiting my local Sikh temple just, um, just last week, and they made it very clear to me what their case is and, and what is shared amongst faiths, is that they are implacably opposed to the proposals for redefining marriage, and they're extremely concerned. And they're also concerned beyond issues of, of faith, beyond issues of equality, to ones of liberty. And that's an issue that should be shared, and indeed is shared across communities. Their concern that um, this debate, at the very least, of a freedom of expression should be properly heard and reasoned. This is a classic occasion for letting the people speak. We cannot afford to allow social engineering to take place, producing the Orwellian results of parent one and parent two instead of mother and father. Such changes are for the people to decide.
reference has already been made today of uh, research that has shown uh, across uh, ages and across cultures that that committed relationship between a man and a woman gives children the best opportunity to flourish in terms of health, education and welfare, then I think we alter that, we review that, we change that at our peril and it's the children who will pay a price and that's why I'm so concerned and that's why I'm here today. We want to strengthen the institution of marriage to help more marriages succeed. The trouble is that successive governments have promised to strengthen marriage, but few attempts have led to real positive change. The avowed intention to widen the scope of marriage, as we see before us, is a hostile strike that rather than strengthening marriage will destroy its meaning and diminish, diminish its importance drastically. And let me explain how, why it should be resisted. First, because, as I said, the legal and theological definition of marriage is that of a man and a woman in a lifelong relationship. A government has many difficult duties to perform on behalf of the nation it is elected to serve, but it is not in its gift to alter such a fundamental relationship. People of all faiths and none will echo this, but Christians will go further in pointing to the sacramental meaning behind marriage, that the scriptures ally the marriage of a man to a woman as similar to the relationship of Christ to his church. And I must say very firmly, that same-sex relations destroys this theology. It's a very brave man to seek to challenge orthodoxy of this kind. Second, a promise has been made that shall be honored. I was present in the House of Lords in 2004, and I'm sure Lord Brennan was there as well, when civil partnerships were agreed. And Baroness Scotland said the right reverence, referring to the House, the, the bishop, bishop benches, the right reverends have made it plain that they wish to preserve the distinction between marriage and registered relationships. We have listened to that comprehensively. And Jackie Smith echoed that the government is clear that civil partnerships and civil marriages are different legal relationships. But now it seems that they are not. It used to be the firm convention that what one government promises, a different and successive government will honour. We are disappointed that so soon after those assurances were given that this government is prepared to challenge what no church would have the temerity to do. Third, marriage should not be used as a vehicle for human rights. The redefinition of marriage does not give anything to homosexual Collins, as Collins has already said, that they do not already have. But what it will do is to undermine marriage as traditionally understood. So it's a fantastic initiative. It's one that we should all get behind. It's one that Revelation viewers I know will get behind. It's one certainly that Christians should get behind because we must care very deeply and very passionately about marriage and its definition. And um, of course, this great picture that marriage represents of Christ, the bridegroom welcoming the church, uh, his bride, and this very notion of his great sacrificial love for us. What a beautiful picture of grace, of marriage, of truth, that is. And that's really why at Revelation uh, TV, with all the supporters there, and certainly Christians everywhere, need to get behind this wonderful initiative, Coalition for Marriage. Let's get the petition signed. Let's get a million signatures onto that petition, and let's stop David Cameron from redefining marriage.